A prozone, um, ozone generator, as often found in public toilets. Um, this unit is an alternative to the air fresheners, or should I say air aromatizers, because that, they don't really freshen the air, they just uh, mask the smells of the aroma. So this is an alternative. This one produces ozone. And I'll just plug it in and uh, you'll hear it running. Hopefully it's not blowing air directly onto the microphone, don't think it is. And you see the power light comes on and then this O3, uh, the ozone LED, doesn't light all the time, it just blinks on and off. And every time it comes on, uh, a corona discharge plate in here produces ozone and you'll hear the fan speed drop. Just a little bit. Just because it's, um, probably just because it's putting extra load in the circuitry. Right, let's open it up. Tamper-proof screw to stop people stealing it or interfering with it. Ooh, it's doing quite a good job actually. And this comes off to reveal what I guess is a power supply in the base and the circuitry module and the ozone generator block itself. So let's take a look at the ozone generator block first. This is supposed to just unclip according to a little picture on the side. Oh, there we go. Oh, immediately notices a loose connection. Okay, the it's a little computer fan, 12 volt, 2.3 watt, and it's got this little ceramic plate which looks as though it slides out. Yes, it does. Oh, and the way it slides in, it's got a connection this side of this one and this side and the other, so that um, it, puts, it applies high voltage, high frequency across this. Um, so these end bits act as the connections. And where the, where they overlap is where the corona is generated through the um, capacitive coupling effectively. Um, through the ceramic, the ceramic act as the dielectric. Interesting. So let's just slot that back in. Put this to the side. Ooh. Don't want to break this because it's just ceramic. There it goes. Quite a neat design actually. Hmm. Then there's an electronic module, but let's take a look at the power supply first. So I see that it uh, has two prongs. Let's get this cover off. It's got a seal in it, which is interesting. Oh, and it's a traditional power supply. It's a transformer, a fuse, a bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, and a little filtering capacitor, perhaps. Oh, and it looks like it's been designed to take an LED and a resistor as well. Well, let's see what voltage this puts out. I'm guessing it's low voltage. Let's see what it says in the capacitor. Oh, the capacitor is pointing directly into the... It says 16 volts in the capacitor, so let's take a wee. Let's plug this in and measure that. Sixteen point four six volts open circuits. That's probably going down to about twelve volts on load, I'd guess. Okay, get that bit out of the way. And let's take a look at the active electronic bits. So we've got three wires coming out here. Um, we've got the a common ground that appears that's common to one side of the corona plate and the negative of the fan motor. And then we've got a, a positive connection for the fan 
um, and then the high voltage positive. I say positive, it's, a, it's high frequency, it's AC. Oh, and it's got um, settings low, medium and high. If you set it to high, the ozone stays on all the time. Medium, it stays on about half the time and low, it just pulses on every so often. There's also a light sensor in the front. You can select between dark light or 24 hours. And in the 24 hour setting, it'll run all the time. If you set it to light, it'll only run when the lights in the toilet facility are on. And if you set it to dark, it'll only run when the place is dark and there's nobody in it at night. Which is quite a good idea, having those options. seal. Interesting, let me put all these seals in it. Right. Okay. Right. Looks quite simple actually. Looks slightly old fashioned. So there's the high voltage transformer and its drive transistor. The high voltage transformer is just directly referenced to the negative rail on one side and the, the output of the high voltage transformer goes straight to the ozone plate. Five connections in the primary, but I don't actually see too many connections coming from that. As if it, I don't know if it's got a feedback oscillator in it. It's got pads here, I'm wondering what that's for. Is it for testing purposes? I guess it must be. Or maybe as an alternative connection point for the output leads. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the chips. This is an LM358N, which is a op amp, and that must be for the light sensor, which is a little bit of plastic sleeving around it. That's probably what this potentiometer is for, for adjusting that. Yes, it does appear to be associated with that. This potentiometer over here, I wonder if that's for calibrating the speed of the cycling. This chip is an NE556N, which is a dual 555 style timer. So that will be doing the cycling on and off. I wonder if that's actually driving the transformer as well, driving the transistor. Because, because looking at that, the transistor's lead It's going, the transistor's gate or base is going through this resistor here. And then it's actually going over into the circuitry in this area. So I'm guessing they might just be, they might actually just have one of the oscillators in this, the timers in this, configured as an oscillator. And that's what this potentiometer is for, it's to tune that oscillator to the resonant frequency of the, of the transformer. The output to the fan has a couple of transistors and just quite an excessive amount of circuitry. I'm guessing really it's just being turned on by the light sensor and when everything else is turned on. I thought that would have just been a single transistor for that, or maybe even an inverter, inverting transistor, but there seems quite a lot of circuitry around that. And it actually seems to go back, the base of that transistor seems to go back to the timer, though it doesn't toggle on and off unless it's just uh, jumping through that to 
may just be going th on through that on its way to the um, op amp. Hmm. Interesting that the transformer has one side of its primary connected to one of the power rails, probably the positive power rail, I'm guessing. Um, yep. Via a I have a low value resistor, yellow, violet, gold, 4.7 ohms. And then some smoothing circuitry on that, just presumably just to filter it a little bit, given that it's going to be quite spiky, the switching of that winding. Then it's actually switched by the transistor through a big diode, which is quite odd. And there's a capacitor. Almost like a little snubber network across that as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a snubber network with this resistor. Interesting. Quite complex, actually. It's, it's a lot more complex than you'd level than I was expecting. These days, you're so used to finding something with a microcontroller in it that it's surprising to see something made with discrete components. But that was quite interesting. I like this module. It's quite neat. Uh, when it's running, you can see a purple discharge uh, in a series of lines across this. Yeah, interesting. Yeah.